Endgame grinds in Monster Hunter across the years have been a fairly interesting subject to look at, especially when you look at group runs. Things such as coordination, set optimization, and hey, even some of the widest varieties of weapon diversity that can be found ever. I mean, if we look back through the history, we had 3 Ultimate with Abyssal Agaiacris farming with Heavy Bowgun, 4U had Heavy Bowgun on Guild Quests, World had Light Bowgun on Kulv, Safi had uh, Light Bowgun, uh, GU had... Uh, oh wait, no, Heavy Bowgun. Ah, well... Looks like today I'll be showing you how to gun an Apex Rampage to death in less than 10, 9 or even 8 minutes. I'm Zero Symmetry, let's get started. Now, first things first, this strategy shines when used in a team of 3 or 4. It is possible with 2, however you're going to have a lot harder of a time with it. Next up. Contrary to how a rampage is typically performed, there will be little to no use of the supplied artillery, and only very specific usage of the members of Kamara Village. With that in mind, we'll go over some housekeeping first, and the purpose of this video. Put simply, with enough organisation, sub-9 rampages can now be your new standard, with enough practice pushing you down to below 7 minutes in some cases. This video will serve to explain how to achieve that, as well as give you a better understanding of the structure of Monster Hunter's cosplay of Bloons. Firstly, the rampage structure for Apex Monsters is as follows. You have three hordes of monsters, each with a subset of waves where a large amount of monsters will appear at the same time. Each horde will have a major threat that must be defeated to proceed. We know this already, so let's take a look at the structure of each horde. Horde 1 has two waves, and your major threat will appear on the second. Horde 2 has three fairly substantial waves, and the major threat appears on the third. Now Horde 3 has one wave, then your apex monster busts in, breaks down the gate, and hightails it to the next area. After arriving at the entrance to Area 2, it will break down the first barricade, then roar to summon the final wave. The key with all of this is maximising the overall uptime of the hunting gong, or the counter signal, which provides a massive damage boost. Bear in mind, there are two gongs available, one in each area, and you get a free proc with each major threat that you face via the counter signal. Balancing when to use these boosts and when to bring out the big guns with your fellow villagers will cover below. As you may have twigged, the primary strategy here will be using shrapnel ammo with light bow guns. Shrapnel, whilst being a joke outside of Rampage, does hit multiple targets at the same time and with our setup can be rapid fired, meaning that it's perfect for messy clusters of monsters with lower health than normal. The set you want should look something like this, with the priority skills being spread up, rapid fire up, weakness exploit, reload 3, and as much spare shot as you can carry. Bonus skills like reload speed are welcome, but in all honesty you're just going to be shooting fish in a barrel here. With the counter gong active and a group of 4, monsters will barely have enough time to breathe before being shredded like some 3am cheddar. The other set to consider will be switching to on the third horde, which is your main damage dealing set. I personally prefer my slicing set shown in this Basil Geese video, which you can click on in the corner, however other sets such as Rajang's sticky heavy bowgun is also acceptable. Speaking of, a quick word about the rampage light bowgun that we'll be using here. The ramp ups in question will be attack 4, shrapnel rapid fire, affinity Surge, Shrapnel Effect 1, and Paralysis Effect 2. Just remember that Shrapnel Effect 1 will need to be added early on to the upgrade tree, as it gives you the most amount of Shrapnel 2, your main ammo of choice, and is replaced by Shrapnel Effect 2 the more you upgrade. Okay, so you're all geared up. Just one final note before we go into the script. You will have to designate one person on the team as the support. This person's job will be to take care of all additional installments, so the villagers, the gongs, and any other artillery that needs to be set up. In addition, the support may also wish to place dragon bait on the floor of each area to keep some monsters tightly grouped. Everyone else will be all muscle. Okay, all set, eating your dango, got your food skills, let's get started. As you spawn in, the heavy lifters will ready up, run to the front of area 1 and eat their buffs. The support will go to area 2 and stand by the gong there at the ready. Once the first horde begins, the area 2 gong is run and the firing squad will start shrapneling things to death. Just keep firing, keep up the pressure and the first horde should be done by the time that gong runs out. Now for the in-between. Everyone should gather the shinies that are dropped from the monsters. If you receive any elemental bombs, place them at the barricade as well as your wyvern blast mines. The support should also ensure that they set up the automatic wyvern fire artillery once it's available, also aimed at the barricade, as it really does pump out a lot of damage and the fire blight is going to help in the long run. Once this is done, everybody ready up and go immediately to Horde 2. 
This time, at the start of Horde 2, the gong in Area 1 is rung. I do just want to say that after doing all of the installments and gongs, the support player should also be running a shrapnel set and contributing to the damage here. Anyways, continue damaging the monsters until the gong runs out, and at this point Hinoa and Minoto should be available. If the major threat hasn't appeared, they should be summoned immediately, as they will make up any lost damage due to no counter signal. For the support player, remember to ensure that the guild girls have a clear line of sight to the monsters in question, otherwise they will actually whiff a vast majority of their shots. After this, it won't be too long until the major threat falls. Now, in between Horde 2 and 3, what you want to do is gather some shinies and warp back to camp. Here you're going to be changing into your heavy hitter armor and item set, and then ready up as soon as you exit the camp and head into Area 1. When Horde 3 begins, mount the nearest cannon or machine cannon and start firing it into the crowd of monsters. The support at this point should summon Fugen if available, as you'll always have a single use given to you at the start of each rampage. If Fugen doesn't wipe the wave clean, pick off any survivors then immediately go to base camp once they've left to avoid the area-wide apex roar. Now, I'm going to interrupt the sort of flow of the fight here to talk about one specific thing to watch out for. You see, as the rampage areas are randomized, there is a single area type that you can get, which sort of messes up this strategy a little bit. The reason being is that most of the time you will get the option to use the splitting wyvern shot in area two against the apex, which is very handy if the strat gets away from you. However, there is, I believe, one type of area with the rampage where the splitting wyvern shot actually actually appears in area 1 and you can use dragonators in the second area. It's shaped kind of like an S and sort of snakes around to the left if you're facing the gate and it's it's a real nightmare to deal with so keep an eye on that. What I would recommend is that instead of the Fugen summon you can actually use the splitting wyvern shot at this point if the monsters are all grouped together to clear out the field before the apex comes in. Anyways, you're in base camp, the apex has roared, it's time to go to area 2. Once you get into Area 2, have the supporters summon your second Fugen and stand in front of the first barricade. What you want to do here is lay down every bomb and mine that you can. When the Apex arrives, trigger the bombs and just start pumping shots into the thing. After destroying the first barrier, the Apex will roar, bringing in that final wave of monsters. Now, just before and just a little bit after, the team will need to be using paralysis shots, which will immobilize the Apex after the roar and let the wave of general monsters make their way into Area 2, where they'll be easy bait for Fugen. The damage dealers after this should keep dumping their strongest shots into the Apex, at which point it should be close to, if not already, dead. If the strat gets away from you at this point, which is fairly common, Utsushi also becomes available at this time, and if there are monsters on the field, they'll be rendered rideable by his action. You can use this additionally to inflict a decent amount of damage on the apex at this point. Once again, it should almost be dead after that point. Honestly, if you're using slicing with this setup, it is crazy how much damage you can do. Keep up the pressure, pump out as much damage as possible, and within no time at all, you'll be looking at single digit minute clear times for Rampage. As an added bonus as well, if you don't plan on making any more Rampage, weapons, those tickets are a gold mine for melding. But that's that. You know, the funny thing is, I've been sent screenshots of sub-5 Apex Rampage clear screen since writing this script, and not even the small ones, we're talking Zenoga, Diablos, Rathlos. I'm very excited to see how that would go, so I'm looking forward to learning more. I want to say a massive thanks to Seferend and Askelov for cluing me into this strat and teaching me the ropes, as well as thank you very much to Kuruneko and YCC from my old Frontier Guild for a place in their rampages. Go on then, lads. See if you can get a team together and give this a whirl. Would love to hear how it worked out in the comments. Take it easy lads, until next time.